Hey guys, I am Perry Nemrov and welcome back to Collider Best of the Week, the place to go if you don't have enough time to watch all the videos on the Collider Videos YouTube channel or to read all the great articles on Collider.com and you want to see some of the best of the best right in one spot. Per usual, we're kicking things off with movie talk and probably no surprise here, I'm opting to highlight the panel's conversation about the new Power Rangers trailer. For the record, I love it. Did they? Let's check it out. It's actually pretty good. I, I mean, I was digging it, and I got two vibes from the film, from the trailer at least at any rate. The first vibe I got was a very Breakfast Club kind of vibe to it, right? And so I was, and I was digging it. Now, I mean, come on, who's who's bullying that girl, calling her ugly? That doesn't happen, but whatever. I mean, so far I was digging the Breakfast Club feel, and then there was very much a Chronicle kind of feel to it as well. And I mean that in the absolute best of ways. And this trailer did. What I did not think the first Power Rangers trailer would do, which has actually made me interested in seeing this movie. Uh, weather forecast, hell is frozen over. Um, but, you know, with that, look, the movie may suck. I'm still kind of half expecting it to suck. But if we're just calling it, like, as we see it with the trailer, I thought the trailer looked pretty good. What did you think? Well, Chester, I think that for me, <laughs> this, is a, this is a movie, when I saw the trailer, I was for kind of feeling the same way, and I did get kind of Breakfast Club meets Chronicle out of the entire thing, and I loved the trailer. I didn't just like it, I loved the trailer. I thought it was a great way to bring in people like us. I, went, I don't know if we need a Power Rangers movie. I think we need a Power Rangers movie. I think this is a good way to tell this story. What I liked about this trailer is that I didn't grow up and I wasn't like a Power Rangers kid. I, I didn't care about them that much, but I noticed in the trailer that it did a good job of getting a vibe that I think people who weren't fans of the lore into the film, but it also definitely had some hallmarks. So if you were a hardcore Power Rangers fan, you saw certain things in this trailer that you're like, oh, I know that, I remember that. That gets me excited to see this movie. This trailer did a magnificent job of marketing a property that I think is gonna get more people excited than they were expecting. The Collider Heroes team is back from New York Comic Con, so they're talking about all the sorts of stuff that dropped at that event. Right now, we're gonna highlight their chat on the news that Sigourney Weaver is joining the Defenders. So let's check out what they thought about her casting and about the series overall. I think Sigourney Weaver is such a genius casting oh. choice to anchor this series because she is a big character actor just like everybody else. I have some ideas about who she's playing. I kind of think that maybe you're gonna find out that either she is the head of the hand mm. or that she is the head of, if you know anything about Iron Fist, he comes from a mystical city called Kunlun. Mm -hmm. And he, the idea is that there are eight mystical cities out there and they all fight for the chance to be connected to the earth every thousand years. And I kind of wonder if you're gonna find out that she's the head of the Silver Serpent City, which has been hinted at in a bunch, we've seen the Silver Serpent symbol in a bunch of the other Netflix series. And I wonder if the Battle of the Eight Cities is gonna happen in New York, and that's gonna be the event that is gonna uh, bring okay. the Defenders together. I want it okay. to be called I Defenders, I want it to be called yeah. Yeah. defenders yeah, right. the Battle of the Eight Cities. Yeah, that's yeah. such a badass yeah. title. That's some Wu-Tang Clan yeah. stuff going on. Yeah. Where are the yeah. chambers, yo? Because you know, imagine it's like, a, a New York's event in, in, invaded by all these cities, and these four people have to stop it. Totally. I'm actually hoping it's more like seven people because if Rachel Taylor doesn't turn into Hellcat like any minute now, uh, right. I'm gonna come through to Netflix and make it happen myself. Same with Misty Knight. Misty Knight was yeah. so incredible. Are, so good. I mean, I, I know the Night Nurse isn't like a superhero, but can she just become really strong or whatever? Because she also like- She is totally, Rosario Dawson is the glue that holds all of these series together. Yeah. So and, you know for sure that she's gonna be in Iron Fist and she's gonna be in The Defenders and she's probably gonna be like, the, you know, she's gonna be like the Tony Stark or Captain America, the leader of that group, even though mm -hmm. she has no powers. I, I'm sure she's gonna be the one that's kind of holding it together. Guys, if you can't guess what I'm gonna highlight for Jedi Council this week, I, I don't know, you lose. The Rogue One trailer dropped a brand new one and there was a super cool Easter egg that I couldn't believe I missed the first time that is just so glaringly obvious. So let's check out the council's thought on that. There are a lot of Easter eggs in this thing. Yeah. Tons yeah. of Easter eggs. First one, pretty blatant in your face, but if you don't watch it for the first time, it can get lost. Is that big ass Jedi. Love that. In, yeah. in, Love in, the, in the stone there. And it's like, it looks like Obi Wan. It's obviously not Obi Wan. Yeah. Um, but it's, I think that for me, it's taking place on Jeddah. Mm -hmm. yep. That's the one that stood out to me is because it's been years upon years upon years. I thought it was also symbolic, the fallen Jedi, all that type of stuff. It's going to lead into them fall, following Donnie Yen. Well, and kind of any of those stories where you have a world that has been built for so long, there's always gonna be some statues. Like they did it in Lord of the Rings. Right. They do it so many times where it's like, there was this world that was built and these statues were here and what has changed now that people just don't care anymore that this is buried and you know, just people are just walking all over it. And I think it was, 
it reminded me even of the Force Awakens trailer when we first saw, you know, in the sand, the remnants of things where it's like, what is the story that that thing is going to tell? Right. It made me think of like what the Imperials, the Empire occupying Jeddah, and did they get people to finally kind of unite behind him and they're toppling the Jedi yeah. uh, statues there. I mean, this looks a little bit, that's a, a stretch I would even say because it looks buried in the sand. It's like it it's looks been there like for a long time. Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah, yeah, a long time. So, but that's where I went with it. Looking, that. and you mentioned the occupation. We've talked about how they have really front and center this occupation of the empire, not only in the trailers here, but in the books and in the mm -hmm. comics and in Rebels and all these things. The Empire Day, and you throw about look at Lost Stars to where Lost mm. Stars was it's how a celebration. Yeah, but like these kids and stuff too, they they see the Empire this one particular way, and this is the way that the Empire is, and we're gonna fight for the Empire. And Jyn Erso in that scene as a, as a young kid has the Empire colors on her mm -hmm. on her uh, lapels. This past week, the Collider Nightmares team went to Beyond Fest in Hollywood, so we took a little time on the show this week to talk about some of our favorite movies that we saw at the festival. Let's check out the conversation. What are some of your favorites from Beyond Fest this year? I have a favorite. What is it? It is Raw. Ooh, You've seen it, right? I sure have seen Raw. I was Raw. so surprised by Raw based on, you know, all that nonsense out of TIFF about people fainting and whatnot. This movie has some pretty good body horror that is, is shocking. I wouldn't call it a fainting movie, although I wasn't at TIFF. I don't know what really happened, but regardless, you should see Raw when it comes out. It is just not what I expected whatsoever in terms of it being a perfect blend of, you know, it had real horror, uh, body horror in it, uh, a lot of comedy, and just a really great story about two sisters, almost like a coming of age vibe. I was mm. so surprised by that, I loved it. I saw Paul Schrader's new movie, Dog Eat Dog, that starred Willem Dafoe and Nicolas Cage, and they were, uh, Nicolas Cage and Paul, uh, Paul Schrader were there in the audience afterwards, did an amazing Q&A. Uh, the film itself is insane. It is totally bonkers. Like, I highly suggest seeing Dog Eat Dog. Crazy film, all over the place, haven't seen, uh, Cage or Defoe at, at their peak in a long time. They're both hitting it out of the park in this film. If you want to see a crazy, awesome Willem Defoe and then a moderate to crazy Nick Cage killing it, definitely see Doggy <laughs> Dog. I cannot, to crazy. Yeah, I cannot say <laughs> enough about it. I got a shout out Autopsy of Jane Doe. Mm -hmm. I was so bummed that I wasn't here to talk about it when the trailer came out, but um, that was one of my favorite movies I saw at Fantastic Fest. Mm. I mean, aside from Colossal and Paul Verhoeven's L, mm. it was absolutely absolutely my right there my third favorite this week on the top 10 show roca and nost are taking a little cue from the accountant and they're doing the top 10 hitman movies so let's check out their discussion on 2014's john wick it's one of those rare movies where uh i remember out of nowhere everybody everybody going dude you gotta see john wick yeah every single person i know that likes any type of movie like that was like yeah. no it is good yeah. and you're like okay and then i eventually saw it and i was like that was excellent it is and there's not a lot of exposition man it doesn't just a, need to be and that's the thing when you do something really really well and you cast it correctly you don't need that much exposition people will go with you in the movie yeah the 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 simple premise the the straw that broke the camel's back being the dog dying which spoiler alert i'm not giving anything away because right. that's the first opening right uh that is not what this is about Right, it's what it represents and where his life is, and mm -hmm. you know, but that that simple action sets up the story. Where we don't need exposition. We right. understand exactly why he's doing what he's doing. Right, the motivation is pure, uh, but that was just the catalyst for the story to begin. The last thing you want to do is mess with a man who's just lost the most important thing in his life and the symbol of the most important mm -hmm. thing of his life when he hasn't dealt with his grief yet. Yeah, That's he, the last thing you want to do. In no way is he remotely over that. No. And with this puppy, you get to grow up and experience, and it's not like it's an older dog, so right. you make new memories, but it was from her, so yeah. you're living on. And, and, yeah. he's, and he's a legendary hitman, and what I love about the film is that they wake up this terror, this beast, yeah. right? And it's it still has a and it has a little bit of humor in the, the Keanu Reeves portrayal of it because he's got a little bit of like smirky confidence to what he's doing in moments, but it's not in any way that detracts from the overall awesomeness of his character, the overall oh, yeah. uh, uh, ability of his character. I mean, that scene where he's taking the sledgehammer to uh, reopen this world that he had put away in honor of his wife is amazing. Now let's check out our first interview of the show. It's Steve's chat with Ben Affleck and Gavin O'Connor on The Accountant. There is some uh, Easter eggs, if you will, towards uh, collectible things that maybe he has 
uh, enjoyed, like as for payment or bought or whatever. One of the things is a master replica Star Wars lightsaber. Um, did you guys put this in the movie specifically as a little waving flag to Disney, like we both want to be involved with Star Wars? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's there because he's the kind of guy who... who uh, would be really into Star Wars. He's got comic books and Star Wars stuff, and a lot of the people that we met who are uh, on the spectrum, you know, were uh, would, one of the characteristics I found was that people would be like really intense fans of one particular genre or show or something. And uh, so I thought it was like that he would find really valuable a like, lightsaber signed by George Lucas would be worth as much to him as the Jackson Pollock painting. And just in case you've missed out the past two weeks, Collider Video is the home of the official Ash vs. Evil Dead after show, so I wanted to take a moment to highlight a little piece of my interview with one of the show's stars, Dana DiLorenzo. What is the pink f <laughs> I think it was one of the first takes where it was the wide, so which they ended up using, because I could tell by my face, where they're, you're seeing Bruce and Ted with the drinks, make the drinks. And I say make because they weren't supposed to really do much to him except add a few, little bit more water, whatever. Um, and then you see me, and because I have to drink it with them. And for some reason, Bruce and Ted got the drinks that the art department made that were just food coloring and water. And what I believe that ketamine was, spoiler alert, was actual, was salt, like salt. So if you notice, uh. if you go back and watch, Ted, <laughs> puts uh, like five heaping <laughs> spoonfuls of salt into my very short glass because I had to chug it. Um, and so <laughs> when, I, when I drink it, you see my face like, oh my God. If you enjoyed that clip, my full chat with Dana airs right here on Monday morning and also after Ash every single Sunday night, right after the new episode of Ash vs. Evil Dead wraps up on Stars, so please check that out. But for now, we're moving on over to TV Talk. They are discussing the new clip from the season seven premiere of The Walking Dead. Obviously, everybody is dying to know which character dies in the premiere, and I am as well. But based on what I see in this clip, I am shifting my guest from Glenn to Abraham. Let's check out what the TV Talk panel thought about it though. I know we've been dogging on The Walking Dead since the season finale, especially you, because you you hated on it the hardest, as we all kind of agreed that it wasn't the best. But I really enjoyed this first clip. I will say that Rick's, this like shaky face, like I'm gonna kill you face, it's just a little melodramatic. But Jeffrey Dean Morgan is really good as that villain. And I really enjoyed that long clip. And I think the, the brain splatter is pretty fun, though I couldn't tell who it was, I'm guessing it's Daryl. Okay, here's the thing. I was so bored in these three and a half minutes. I, it, the writing was what bothered me. I get it. I get that he's angry. He can do the shaky mean, uh, Andrew Lincoln, I'm sad and wet face. Would you Sweaty actually hair. say, I'm gonna kill you to Negan if you had just seen him bash yeah. your buddies, your right hand man, as is the name of the title of the first episode's brains out? Or would you shut the F up and sit there and take it and then say that's out? Because what, why wouldn't he just take a bat to him? I don't care. <laughs> I just, I mean, you're, the, the, the whole hype of the show is like, we're going to find out who dies in the first hour. Come on, girl. Give me some of that. So proud of you. We're going to find out who dies in the first hour. That's their selling point. How are we like, hey, guys, we're going to tell you a good story in the first hour. Ooh. I don't care who dies. Tell me a good story first. If somebody happens to die in that good story, I'll watch it. Otherwise, I'm turning that TV off. I'm going to pick up that book. Oh, 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 oh. oh. drop it. Oh. Now it's time for the Collider.com portion of the show when we get to highlight some written features done by the great gang over there. First up, we are continuing the horror series and moving on to the 21 best horror movies of the 1970s. Haley Fouch wrote this one and she's really got some of the best of the best on the list, including one of my personal favorites, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. If you want a lighter dose of horror, Dave Trumbor also made a list of the 25 most monstrous cartoons ever. This is a kid appropriate list, so there's nothing too mature or bloody. So there's some great fun for the whole family options here like Beetlejuice, Mutant League, and Scooby-Doo, just to name a few. Next up, we've got a piece ranking all 11 seasons of Supernatural from Amy Radcliffe. As one might expect, there's some spoilers in this one, so be mindful of that. But if you're a fan of the long, long-running series, this is a great article to check out. 
Now let's move on over to a great write-up from Adam Chitwood. Are you a big fan of binge-watching? Many are. So Adam took a moment to explore the rise of binge-watching and how that viewing experience compares to watching weekly television. Also from Adam, we've got the 23 most exciting film composers working today. I'd carve out some serious time for this one because not only is this whole thing well worth the read, but Adam also includes clips of the composer's work and it's nearly impossible to not listen to it all. It is time for the Schmodown section of the show. First up, we're gonna highlight our team match. It is Team ETC versus The Real Rejects. In terms of knowledge, John and I, my brain is okay. His brain, okay. You put both of us together, we're like Bradley Cooper and Limitless. Scarlett Johansson and Lucy. Christian Harloff in the Schmodown. The guy from the Limitless TV show in the Limitless TV show. Real Rejects, I came here to eat pizza and kick your ass. I'm almost out of pizza. They are Greg and John, the Real Rejects! They are all stone -based. Solidarity and entering. Holding hands. holding hands like they're a high school football team yeah. or two people walking in love on the Santa Monica Pier. Ricky and Elliot ETC! What you gonna do when they come for you? Which comedy features characters named Smokey, Debo, and Big Worm? Friday. One point right, for ETC, go. they're yeah. on the board. All right, action adventure, Greg. Yes, sir. Which famed villain is the antagonist of Sherlock Holmes' Game of Shadows? Uh, Moriarty. Correct. Yes. Two points right off the bat, they came to play. Now it's time for a very special singles match. We have Olympic gold medalist, super talented athlete, and all around nice guy, Cody Miller versus, what's his name again? Ah, uh, JTE. Am I afraid to play an Olympic hero in the Schmodown? No, because this is not Olympic sport. This is a Schmodown. This is my dojo. Movie trivia is one thing and swimming is another thing. And I happen to be really good at both and I'm about to prove that, you know? Those are just two sports that I've been training my whole life for. I've been swimming my whole life and I've been watching movies my whole life and I'm about to prove it. The Olympian, Cody Miller! Comes. Cody is here with the ultimate symbol of that. excellence Perfect. around his neck, the gold medal. the category of action adventure. Which action star played the lead in the 2008 remake, Death Race? Jason Statham. Correct! All right. Let's win the crowd over. The crowd was booing him unmercifully, and now they look a couple claps. Okay. Cody Miller is up. In the category of animation, Cody, what happened to Shrek after he drank the potion from the fairy godmother's workshop in Shrek 2? Did he turn into a human? That is correct. correct. Oh, I'm Cody Miller. <laughs> I love it. Now it's time for Meme of the Week, the portion of the show when we get to highlight a meme or a piece of artwork that one of you have sent in. This week's winner is Aaron, and he goes by the name AT Titanium on Twitter. If you watch Movie Talk, chaos ensued when John Campia interrupted Natasha on Movie Talk the other day, and it looks like Wendy wasn't the only one who was shocked by the madness. Do you want your meme or artwork featured right here on Best of the Week? It's super easy to do. All you gotta do is pick a moment from one of our shows, make a meme or a piece of art about it, and then send it on in to mailbag at collider.com, or you can tweet it at us using the hashtag Collider Best of the Week. Blooper! Oh, yeah, he so mad at me. I'm your host, Natasha Martinez, and this- Yeah, is yeah, 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 listen, that schnapp, that's Christian Harloff, I'm John Campia. <laughs> It's Star Wars Day! Star Wars has come out! We were practicing four-part harmony. But don't blow the... Yeah, what are you doing? We're... 
don't wait you die we we prize it <laughs> surprise <laughs> was the David. spoiler alert also here is the giggle monster herself Perry Nemeroff <laughs> this is going to be a total nightmare guys <laughs> no. i'm sorry holy oh cats. my god yeah. i mean this is like this is such an impressive you say holy cats i did i'm going to steal that all right that's <laughs> all yours <laughs> i stole it from nerdist alicia loot so thanks alicia this is the most spectacular single image i have ever seen for a movie <laughs> ever. You can just tell the quality is oozing off the screen. I was expecting a sarcastic remark after that and it didn't come. I think I'm legitimately happy to see you back. All right, what's up? Joining me at the table are two other people who have growling stomachs just like Sinead. <laughs> Allison Williams, Katherine Keener, and Bradley, Bradley Wilson. <laughs> I was like, Bradley is the one I We're took with you, Clark. Over. We'll get through this together. <laughs> oh, and Sushi. <laughs> the glaive is really hard. I need math homework. Oh. Perry making some weird sounds from over there. <laughs> yeah, it freaks you out, doesn't it? Yeah. You're just jealous you can't do it. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for it? <laughs> I have to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> The fact of the matter is, I'm still going to be in the movie. They're not putting me front and center, but I'll be there. I wanted Benicio. I said, come on, do the movie. He said, no, I can't. I'll do Sicario 2, 3, 4, and 7. <laughs> so for me, I don't like it, but I'm going to do it. Oh, I was going to say Winter's Bone or... Well, Winter's no, no, Bone no. is what you before, got. Before. <laughs> Nobody heard what I just did. What? Winter's <laughs> Boner? Yeah. Winter's yeah. Boner? <laughs> I get it now, because he said Winter's Bone or... Take, strike that. Edit it. <laughs> <laughs> edit it. Start the show over. Wait, look, there's poop. Right, right oh, next no, to you. Right? No, no, oh, the other side. Yeah. <laughs> poop in the corner. There's poop in the corner. It, it's a, another sign that society is going backwards. I mean, we, we 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 progressed so far from ancient Egypt and you know hieroglyphics, and then we evolved into language and using letters and words and sentences, and we're just going back. Ooh, all right, <laughs> Ray writes. <Ryan's. laughs> you guys, I need like. And then there's poop in the corner. You can just check that out. <laughs> I wonder if poop has arms and legs, or is it just shit oh, and no, diarrhea? Guys, you're making me watch an Amber Rose twerking video. Twerking video. video. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot yeah, of twerking. She's very famous. Over, she's twerking she's on top a, of a list of She's got a, she's got a, wow. a big future behind her. Been with you guys since the days when Ellis had two eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> was that a thing? What? His eyebrows? Did you say he has a... A uh, uh, unibrow. <laughs> A unibrow. Elias, a little bit of so color. We're, we're talking I know, I know. over you. I hope I get to buy or sell he, at some point. Yeah. This, is how Riley feel, this is how Riley feels on Nightmare. <laughs> no, no, but okay, go ahead. <laughs> if you watch any episode of Ash vs. Evil Dead, you need to see that just to get a taste of what this series can accomplish. And when so, she says taste, oh. she means it. You could call that second episode Ash vs. Ass. And that kind of oh. says it all. James, Wat J James Watkins and Joe Wright and stars Gugu Mathava, uh, Math sorry, how do you and say it? I, I would say Gugu and Batha Raw. Uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, Riot, what? Wyatt Russell. Wait, is Brabley, is Brabley in this one? <laughs> And Bravely, and Bravely Whitbirds. I really appreciate, especially everybody here, except for Cody, obviously. I Aww. really appreciate. We appreciate you, Cody. He emerges out of a brown mist. Right. Yeah. He's always got like a little bit of toilet paper yeah. like on his shoe. He could be Doctor Shit. Well, welcome back, guys. This is Sauce Girl we're over here for TV Talk. I'm wearing a sparkly skirt. I got a sparkly personality, and my co-host is Jerk. It all started with Perry and her giggles. Oh, oh you fault. had to say Winter's Boner, Perry. <laughs> And that is a wrap on this week's episode of Collider Best of the Week. You guys know what to do. Please hit the comment section below and share some of your favorite moments from this week's lineup of shows. I am Perry Nemroff. You can catch me on Twitter and Instagram at pnemroff. Please go on over and bookmark Collider.com. Subscribe to the Collider Videos YouTube channel. Watch and read everything. But just in case you don't have enough time, that's what Best of the Week is for. Have a great weekend, everyone. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.